it's a way of life. Day in, day out. It's felt when they walk in a room. It's seen in what they do. in the mark their lives make. Well, I'm excited to be here. Aren't you glad you came to church today? Yes, Yes, three of you. That's good. Let's try again. Aren't you glad you came to church today? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, maybe that video had you thinking, man, I should have been a cowboy. I should have learned to rope and ride. Where am I, six shooter? Just kidding. (laughs) Actually, for some of you are thinking, I should have been a cowboy, baby. Just depending on how you grew up. However you grew up, all right? Hey, I'm glad you're here. If you're new to Grace, I'm Chris. I'm the lead pastor here. I would love to meet you. I hope that you'll be a part of our Grace family. And if you're checking out God, you're not sure what you believe. If you believe, you may have some serious questions. You are in the right place. We want this to be a place where you can ask questions when you're ready and take a journey to know God. And my hope, our prayer for you is that you'll experience Jesus the way that I have, the way so many of us have, that has forever changed our lives. He continues to because it's so much more than religion. It is a relationship with God like none other. And so I'd love, I hope that you experience it too. And today you're here as we celebrate one of my favorite things that we get to do as a church. Uh, and, And it's something that tells the story of our faith. Before we get started, I just want to pray and ask God to move in our time together. So Father, will you speak to us today through your word, through your spirit, that your spirit would move in this place and uh, God, will you move us to a place of obedience? We, we just uh, ask that you would remove any distractions in this time so we can lean in and hear from you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this series that we're starting today is called Branded. And where we're going to be looking at the characteristics over the next few weeks uh, of what it looks like to, to be a follower of Jesus. Characteristics that should be seen in the lives of those who call themselves Christians or, or, or say they follow Jesus. And when it comes to it, most of us know what a brand is, right? It's a stem, symbol that establishes some sort of identity or ownership or a specific company. We, we can look at clothing and know what uh, the, the kind of clothing it is, who it's from by the logo or the icon or a restaurant from the shape of the sign or the colors on the sign, right? It helps identify something. And in, in the early days of the American West, the brand was a trademark, and it still is, a trademark of a specific ranch that shows the ownership of livestock, of cattle. It is a unique marking that represents a specific ranch. It's registered with the state. And for those who work on the ranch, it, it's, uh, uh, it represents pride and duty and stewardship and loyalty. There's actually a saying that says the cowboy should ride for the brand, which meant you, you should work in a way that carries out the mission and the goals of the ranch you work for in a way that represents that ranch well. And, and as followers of Jesus... If we're going to truly follow Jesus, we must learn to live for the brand, to to live in a way that represents the brand well. But let's be honest, we haven't always done this well. We don't always get this right. I don't always get this right. In fact, you probably know people, I know people who maybe struggle to put their faith in Jesus because of a bad experience with someone who called themselves a Christian. I've heard many as a pa- people as a pastor say, yeah, I was hurt by a church. I was hurt by other Christians. And I'm just telling you, me too. I have too. I- I've been there. And-, and if I'm really honest with myself, I probably can look at myself and realize there's times in my life I have not represented the brand well either because I'm flawed and I'm a flawed human. But the reality is, is that this often creates confusion about what it means to be a Christian or what a Christian is meant to represent. 
But throughout Scripture, especially in the New Testament, we see Jesus' teaching and other writings in the New Testament that explain what it looks like to follow Jesus. Characteristics that should be seen in the lives of those who call themselves Christian and what it means to represent the brand well. So today, I want us to start by looking at something that Jesus told us to do to identify ourselves with him, to, to, to go public with our faith as followers of Jesus. And Jesus is the one who told us to do it. There, there's a guy named Matthew, one of his closest followers and friends, and God used him to write an eyewitness account of Jesus' life and, and his ministry and his death, his burial, and his resurrection. This guy who wrote this saw Jesus with his own eyes resurrected from the dead. And he captured what Jesus said just before he ascended into heaven. His name was Matthew. And in Matthew 28, we see these final words of Jesus. It says this, Jesus came and told his disciples, I've been given all authority in heaven and on earth. He's saying, man, this is the authority that God has given me. And now with this authority, I'm commissioning you. Because he says this, therefore... Go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. He says, go make disciples. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Now, he's saying, look. I, this is often called the Great Commission because what he's saying is, uh, I am giving you the authority to carry out my mission. To continue doing what I came here to do. Leading people back to God. Helping people know and follow Jesus. And, and, and he says it this way, make disciples. Well, that's what a disciple is. It's a follower of Jesus. It's someone who's put their faith in Jesus and said, I want to follow you with my lives. And he says, man, when they make that decision, their next step is to go public. I want you to baptize them. Right? Make disciples, baptize them, teach them to know and follow me. And listen, this is why we exist as a church. Our mission is simply to inspire and equip people to know and follow Jesus. That is why we are here. We want to help other people find what we have found and help them learn how to follow Jesus on a daily basis. And when a person puts their faith in Jesus and becomes a follower, becomes a disciple, he, he tells us to baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And this is why baptism is so important to us as a church. Because it was important enough for Jesus to include it in his last command. Think about it. His last command before he leaves the earth, it was important enough to him to, say, to include it in the last thing that he says, in the commissioning statement. And so it's important to us because we see it as this. It is an exercise of obedience. It's doing what Jesus has told us to do, what God wants us to do. Growing up, my parents uh, taught us a little phrase about obedience, what obedience is. And when we were struggling with obedience, they would ask us, hey, what is obedience? And we'd have to say, obedience is doing what you're told to do, when you're told to do it, with a good attitude. <laughs> with a what? A good attitude. With a what? A good attitude. And the reality is that's what God wants of us. We'll just trust him and do what he asks us to do, even when we don't understand. That that's what faith is. It's trusting him. It's being willing to do what he asks us to do. And so th this is important because it is an act of obedience. It's the first act of obedience. It's also evidence of our faith. Think about it like this. When a person buys a bunch of cattle, they own the cattle when they pay for the cattle. But then they go home and they put their own marking, their own brand on it to let other people know that those cattle belong to them. The, the, the brand doesn't make them uh, the owner. Then what they paid for them is what, what, what makes them the owner. Right? Baptism does not save you. We are saved by grace through faith so that no man could boast. It is a gift from God. He, he, he paid the price for our sins. And when we receive this gift, you can't earn a gift. It is received. When we receive this gift is when we experience salvation. But the next step is to go public to let the world know that you've put your faith in Jesus. One of the church 
uh, early church leaders, a guy named Paul, and he explains why this is so important. Now, if you don't know about Paul, um, you're not familiar with him. He's a guy whose life had been radically changed by Jesus, okay? He, he wanted, when we first read about Paul, he wanted Christians to die. He wanted to wipe out Christianity, experienced Jesus for himself, changed his life. He became an early church leader. God used him to write much of the New Testament scripture. In his letter to the Romans, God is using him to explain the importance of of baptism when he says this in Romans chapter 6 he says well then should we keep on sinning so that God can show us more and more of his wonderful grace why because it's by grace you've been saved from by, through faith in Jesus that then he, he gave you forgiveness when you didn't deserve it he says should you just keep on sinning so you can experience more grace he says well of course not that doesn't make any sense that is a contradiction and here's why, because it says, since we have died to sin, that's what happens when you put your faith in Jesus. You put your old way of living to death. Since we have died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? It wouldn't make sense. And he says, or, or have you forgotten that when we were joined with Christ Jesus in baptism, we were joined with him in his death? Now, the interesting part as you begin to look at this, where join with Christ in baptism is actually in the Greek, it's, it's just baptized into Christ. It's baptized into Christ. And so as you begin to look at it, the word baptized is a, a work, word in the Greek, baptizo, which means to fully submerge, to immerse under. And, and why that's interesting is when the translators begin to translate it from, from Greek to English, they didn't know really what to do with this word baptizo because there were so many different thoughts on how a person should be baptized. So instead of doing the hard work, they just transliterated the word into baptism and created a new word. But the word itself could be translated and some translate it into you, you are immersed into union with Jesus. That it is, a, it is evidence of your relationship with Jesus. And he's saying, listen, this is, this is important because it tells the story of your faith. That you've been joined with Christ. This is also why we baptize by immersion here. Because the word literally means to dip under, to fully submerge. It's also the example we see of Jesus, that he was fully submerged. And it's also the example throughout the New Testament scriptures. And so we do it because it's to tell the story of what Jesus has done in our lives. It is a public demonstration of an internal transformation that happens through faith. It's an evidence of faith. It tells a story, right? Uh, God used Paul as he continued in verse 4 to say this. For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. He says, look, when you put your faith in Jesus, you put your old life in the grave, right? You put your old life to death. And actually, this is a picture of repentance, See, see, repentance is a change of mind that's meant to lead to a change of behavior. It is admitting that your way was wrong, and that's what sin is. It's doing our way instead of God's way. We've all done that. We've all sinned. And, and so to repent is to say, man, I'm, I realize and recognize my way is not the right way. It's sin. I don't want to live that way anymore. I, I want to I live God's way. It's a change of mind that leads to a change of behavior. Jesus himself told us that he wants us to understand this concept of repentance. A guy named Luke, who also God used to write an eyewitness account of Jesus' life. He, he was a, 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 a doctor, and, and he captured what Jesus said in Luke chapter 24 when he says this. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance for the, for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. He says, I, I want people to understand that, that you've got to repent. You've got to turn from your way and turn to God's way to put your faith in him. And it makes sense if you think about it. Because sin is simply putting faith in your own way instead of God's way. It's trusting your way over God's way. So if you're going to put your faith in Jesus, you've got to put your old way to death. You have to turn from your old way and, and put your, to, in order to put your faith in Jesus to save you. See, see, we have to repent and replace faith in self with faith in Jesus. 
And so baptism is this human object lesson that literally tells the story of our repentance where we said, I put my old life in the grave and I was resurrected with Jesus to new life. It tells the story. See, this is why as a church we don't baptize babies and we have a process for baptizing young children. Because we, we believe it's meant to tell the story of our personal decision to put our faith in Jesus. It's meant to be believer's baptism. And listen, if you were baptized as a child, as a baby, that's okay, all right? But, but the reality is, is that is, wasn't your decision to be baptized, right? That was your parents' decision. It's their expression of faith, their expression of their desire to raise you in a way to know and follow Jesus. And so... If you put your faith in Jesus and your next step is to go public through baptism, taking that step doesn't negate what they desired. If anything, it affirms that their desire to raise you to know and follow Jesus, and it's built on the foundation of their faith, and that's so great. But at Grace, we don't baptize babies because we believe scripturally baptism is meant to be the story of our faith in Jesus. And with kids, we actually have young kids go through a little booklet on baptism with their parents. You can pick up one of those at the hub or when you pick up your kids today because we want them to go through it and read through it and make sure they understand that they're not being saved through baptism, that, that salvation doesn't come because you, you get in a tub and get wet, all right? This, this is just normal paradise water right here, all right? It, it tells a story. And so when the kids go through that booklet, we want them to set up a time to talk with one of the pastors to make sure they understand that, that baptism doesn't save you, but it is evidence of your faith. It is a way to tell the world about your faith. But you know what? It's also an expression of our identity in Christ. It, just like a brand tells you who the cow belongs to, all right, <laughs> who the livestock belongs to. Uh, we don't have to actually get branded, which is good news, all right? But when we're baptized, it is an expression of our new identity, that we have a new identity in Christ. God used Paul to say it this way in his letter to the Galatians. He says, for you are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. You are now part of his family. You are a son and daughter of the most high God. You are his family. And he says, and all who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ like putting on new clothes. There is no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male or female, for you are all one in Christ. He said when you, when you are baptized, you, you are telling the story of putting your faith in Jesus. And when you do, he brings you into his family. And, and baptism is letting the world know of your new identity in Christ. He, he takes these basic characteristics. You're no longer Jew or Gentile, male or female, slave or free. He says, man, all these things that you used to find your identity in, that doesn't matter because there's a new identity that trumps all of it. It's a spiritual identity. And, 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 and it means that you're no longer uh, an oil-filled worker who's a Christian. You're a Christian who works in the oil field. It, it's not that you're, you're a, a, a teacher or a coach who's a Christian. You are a Christian who teaches or coaches. You're no longer a mom or a dad who's a Christian. You, you are a Christian who teaches. And here's why that's so important, because our identity should inform what we do and how we do what we do. It should change everything about the way that we live our lives. And when we are baptized, it, he says, you are putting on your new identity like putting on new clothes. Letting the world know that my identity is found in the one who died for me and he rose from the grave. And I want to live for him in every area of my life. It's choosing to wear the brand. And there's many here today who are going to make that decision. But before we get to that, I believe God is speaking to a couple different groups of people in one of two ways. For some, you know that today you need to put your faith in Jesus. You need to start with that. You recognize that you've sinned. We've all sinned. The problem with sin is it breaks our relationship with God and it leads to death and destruction. And there's nothing we can do to make up for us. And it's literally a debt that we can't pay. But God did something for us. He paid the debt by sending his own son to the earth, lived a perfect life, then he took our place. He paid our debt with his life. Then he rose from the grave so that anybody who would admit that they've sinned, and we all have, 
and you came to a place where you believe what Jesus did for you on the cross was enough, that he rose from the grave, and you're ready to say, I'm done living life my way. I want to trust him with my life. If that's you today, maybe today's the day you take that step. Today's the day of your salvation. There's no reason to wait. You don't have to clean yourself up. It doesn't matter what, where you've been or what you've done. He did it for you. It's a gift, and all you have to do is receive it. So here's what I want to do real quick. I want to pause and ask you all to bow your heads and close your eyes. And if you say, man, I need to put my faith in Jesus, and I believe there's many that God's speaking to right now, and you know it, will you, will you tell them something like this? So the prayer doesn't save you. What saves you is you being honest with God. Tell them something like this. God, I know that I've sinned. But I believe Jesus died on the cross to pay the penalty of my sin. And that he rose from the grave. I don't have it all figured out. But I know I need you. So today I put my faith in you. I believe that you died for me on the cross. And that he ro you rose from the grave. And I ask you today to save me. To fill me with your Holy Spirit. To change me from the inside out. Will you help me know you and follow you for the rest of my life? Thank you for loving me. Thank you for saving me. Pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Today, if that's the decision you made, you made the most incredible decision of your life. And we want to celebrate with you and we want to help you take your next step. One of those next steps is simply going public with your faith through baptism. And you can do that today. There's no reason to wait. See, there's another group that I believe God is talking to today. And you know that you need to take this step of obedience. You've been putting it off for whatever reason. Maybe for some, the only reason you haven't been baptized is because you just didn't really understand why. Why you needed to be, what the importance was, what it really means. I hope today we've answered some of those questions and you're ready to say yes and, and take that step of obedience today. Go public with your faith. There's really no reason to wait. Because one of the questions I get sometimes is, well, when, when should I be baptized? You know, the pattern we see in Scripture is when you believe. In fact, in Acts chapter 2, the apostles are teaching a crowd of people, and, and they start going, man, we believe. What should we do? They say, repent and be baptized. And it says that 3,000 people were baptized that day. It doesn't say 3,000 people scheduled baptism for a time that was convenient for their calendar. They said, no, 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 3,000 people went public that day. There's no reason to wait. I had a buddy growing up who, who was baptized after a vacation Bible school with his buddies because he felt like that's what he was supposed to do. But it wasn't until college that he truly believed in Jesus, that he put his faith in Jesus and realized it. And then he got baptized in college because he said, man, this is when I believe. This is, I want to go public with my faith now because now I actually believe in Jesus. And maybe that's you today. Maybe today's the day you go public with your faith because today's the day you believe, you understand. I've had some people ask me before, well, well, can I be baptized? I mean, can I follow Jesus and not be baptized? Or can I be a Christian or saved and not follow Jesus? The reality is we are saved by grace through faith, not by works. So the answer is yes, but I've got a question for you. Why would you say you want to follow Jesus but not be willing to take the first step he asks you to take? See, authentic faith is saying yes to Jesus and saying, I'll follow you and do whatever you want me to do. Baptism doesn't save you, but it is an exercise of faith and obedience. I believe there's many. You have put your faith in Jesus, but maybe pride or indifference or even defiance has kept you from taking the step of obedience and putting on your new identity in Christ. Today, Jesus is calling you to leave that old way of thinking in the grave, come out of the grave, and go all in in your faith and follow Jesus. Today's your day. There's no reason to wait. So here's, here's what I want us to do. Baptism is an exercise of obedience. It is evidence of our faith, and it is expression of identity. And there's many today who need to make that decision. There's some who have already chosen. 
And we're going to celebrate in just a minute. And we're gonna, when I say celebrate, we're going to go crazy like somebody just walked out of the grave because that's the story it tells, all right? We're going to celebrate. Now, I know some of you are thinking, well, I, I don't have a change of clothes. I'm not ready because I don't have. Don't worry. We've got you covered, literally. All right, my favorite joke to make on these days. We've got shirts, shorts, everything you need to be baptized, a change of everything. We've got towels. We've got everything. There's no reason to wait. You can be baptized today. Or, you, well, my family, my friends aren't here. People, I want to praise God for modern technology. We are streaming right now all over the world. You can send them a text and say, I'm about to go public with my faith. I'm about to get baptized. Go watch at gf.church slash watch or on our YouTube or on our Facebook. Listen, all your excuses are just that. Excuses are like armpits. We all got them. They all stink. It is time for you to take a step and go public with your faith. There's no reason to wait. So here's what's going to happen. I'm going to pray. After I pray, the band's going to play, and everybody who was planning to get baptized and everybody that God told you that he was planning for you to be baptized today, you're going to go with me. We're going to go out there, all right? If, if you're, you need have questions, there's a group of people who will answer those questions for you. If you're not sure, just come ask questions. If you go, man, I know I'm in. I don't have a change of clothes. We'll be ready to hand that to you as well for you to pick it up, go get changed. And then we are going to celebrate in a minute people telling uh, the world about their faith in Jesus, all right? Hey, if you're a believer, as I pray, we pray for those that God is moving in their heart right now, that they'll have courage and boldness to do what God's telling them to do. Let's pray. Father, I ask that you would move right now in this moment as we celebrate those going from death to life, those who've put their faith in Jesus. I pray for boldness and courage for people to fully follow after you. And today would be a celebration a celebration of what you've done for us and the way that you have changed our lives forever. We'll give you all the praise for it. Pray this in Jesus' name, amen. All right, I want everybody to stand with me, stand with me. The band's gonna play. There's people with follow me signs. Let's follow them out. If you've already signed up or you're signing up today, let's go get baptized. Let's go.